When you need a hole you don't have a drill for, then you need a boring bar. If you have to cut a thread you don't have a tap for, then you need an internal threading tool. Today we'll make a tool that can do both. I had some material laying about, so let's begin by marking out the overall length, in my case the width of a tool holder plus about 40 millimeters. Then we'll take the hacksaw for a spin. After some quality time is spent, we'll shuck it up in the lathe and face both ends of the material. I'm making my tool out of a steel hex rod, but if you have a 4 jaw shuck on your lathe you can make it out of a square rod if you want to. Because I'm using a hex rod, I will have to make a flat in order to get a good start for the next drilling operation. You can do this with a file or with an end mill on the lathe itself. Before we start drilling, we'll make sure that the part is on center height, then spot drill, pilot drill, and follow up with the diameter of the piece of scrap high speed steel that's going to be used as the cutter. In my case it's a broken tap with a 4.5 mm diameter. Then we give ourselves some stick out, put the center at the end of the part and add some tail support. It's always a good idea on these small lathes. But I bet you can get away without it by having less stick out and take smaller cuts. The diameter of the shaft is really dependent on what you're going to do with the tool. I aimed for 7.5mm. You always want as thick and rigid of a tool as you have space for. I'm taking 0.15mm depth of cuts, hand feeding slowly and it's cutting well, taking a small nice chip. Then we'll drill and tap the end for a set screw. This will hold the cutting bit in place later. I decided to clean it up a bit by adding a chamfer, polishing the shaft and deburring the hole with a cordless drill. Now it's time to grind the actual tools. I'm making two out of my broken tap, one for boring and one for threading. The type of cutter we're making is called a D-bit, and it's fairly simple. The idea is that you start out with something cylindrical, then grind away half of the thickness at one end, so you're left with half a cylinder. Then on the flat ground part, you can scribe your geometry and shape it on the grinder. Because I'm no grinding artist, I will illustrate what I'm going for, and then you can tell me if I ended up with something that looks remotely close to it. For the threading tool, I'm simply trying to grind the 60 degree thread profile with a bit of relief and then add a tiny flat spot for the root of the threads. The boring tool is basically just a square, but I'm adding some relief at the front and top with clearance angles along the sides and finish up with a radius to get a stronger cutting edge. And here is how they turned out. I ground them in one piece since it left me more material to hold on to while grinding, but now that they're finished, it's time to separate them. We are not quite finished with the tool yet. I decided to try to make it a bit more stylish. I sanded all the sides and then polished off the two sides that will be clamped in the tool holder a bit extra. Then I masked off the other ones, mixed up a batch of white paint and brushed it on. For that Scandinavian IKEA look, you know? And here's the end result. I'm happy with it, looks sharp, but does it work, I hear you ask. Let's mount it in a free tool holder and find out. Uh, just kidding of course, I don't have any free tool holders. I had to demote another tool to a holder free status. But uh, let's make something. The obvious downside of the design for the boring tool is that you can't really turn any internal shoulders. You can basically just bore straight through. Then let's swap out for the threading bit and
That's a respectable looking thread, I have to say. Now, this is in brass, so perhaps not the greatest challenge, but still happy with it. The brass ring will be used when I make some discontinued brake parts for my motorcycle project. So, if you're interested, I suggest that you check that video out. Thank you.